Do you want to learn how to strengthen your knee with exercises that you can do from home? Well, if so, this video is for you. But let's face it, there are hundreds if not thousands of videos on the internet about how to strengthen your knee. So what makes this video different from all the other videos out there? Well, largely most videos about knee strengthening treat knee strengthening exercises like they're one thing. Kind of like if you go to a doctor's office and they reach in a file drawer and pull out a sheet of knee exercises and hand them to you, those exercises weren't made for you. Those exercises were made for the average person with knee pain. And generally, when you do a program made for the average person, you get average results. And so wouldn't it be nice to be able to find just the exercises that help you and to skip the other ones that either don't help at all and are just time wasters or are possibly making you worse? Well, that's what we're going to do in this video. First of all, what's good about strengthening your knee? And intrinsically, people tend to think that having strong muscles or strong joints is a good thing. Now, your knee is technically a joint. It's not a muscle, so you can't really strengthen your knee. But most of the time, when people talk about knee strengthening exercises, they're talking about the muscles above and below the knee, your quadriceps, your hamstrings, and your calf muscles. And that's what most knee strengthening exercises focus on, is the quadriceps, the hamstrings, and the calf muscles. Now, largely when I hear people say that they want to strengthen their knee, it's for one of two reasons. The first reason is that their knee feels weak or unsteady or unstable, like it might give out or they might fall, or they've actually fallen in the past, and they want to be able to move around more safely without risk of their knee giving out on them. The other reason is because they have knee pain, and they have the impression that by strengthening their knee, it'll make the knee pain go away. Now, there are two really big assumptions in there that may or may not be true. The first one is that the muscles around the knee, the quadriceps, the hamstrings, and the calves are actually weak to begin with in the first place. And after seeing hundreds or thousands of patients with knee pain and balance problems, I can tell you it's only a small percentage of people who actually have weakness of their quads or the hamstrings or the calves. Largely, a lot of people have really strong muscles around their knee. And so, first of all, you want to make sure that you actually have knee weakness. The second assumption is that if you actually do have knee weakness, that fixing the weakness will fix the instability problem or fix the knee pain. And you have to think about it from a cause and effect relationship, that if you happen to have knee weakness, and you happen to have instability and or pain, you're kind of assuming that the weakness was the cause of the instability or the pain and not the effect of the pain, or what's more likely that there's some third or other cause that's causing both of those. And so if you're treating the knee weakness and it's not really the cause of the knee pain or the knee instability, then you're really just treating one symptom to help get rid of the other symptom instead of treating the root cause. And that's really what we hope to find. So let's consider a couple different situations where people tend to have either knee pain, knee weakness, knee instability, and then we'll go over specific exercises for those use cases. Most people don't actually really want knee strengthening exercises. They wanna be able to walk without knee pain or without fear of falling. They wanna be able to squat down to pick something up or get off of a low couch or a low chair or a low toilet without having knee pain or without feeling like they really have to push up using their hands. They want to be able to get up and down from the floor, for example, to play with their grandkids or to work out in the garden. They want to be able to go up and down stairs without risk of falling and injuring themselves. And so I'll go over some different exercises for each of those specific use cases. Now, if you've seen knee strengthening videos before, or if you've gotten a sheet of exercises from a doctor or a physical therapist about knee strengthening exercises, you've probably seen something generally like where you're bending and straightening your knee like this, maybe with a weight or maybe with a resistance band, where you're doing a quad set where you tighten your thigh muscle and try and straighten your knee out, 
or maybe you're laying on your back and doing a straight leg raise where you raise your leg up in the air. And the problem with those type of knee exercises is they don't translate into function. We largely don't use our knees when we're sitting down or laying down. And so the most functional exercises for knee strengthening are ones where you're standing up and using them in the ways that you use them in everyday life. Now, there are certain situations where those are good exercises to do. And I want to first cover those situations. And those are largely when either you have some problem like a fracture where you can't put weight on your knee, or you've recently had a surgery and you've got some surgical precautions, or maybe the swelling from the surgery has inhibited your quad muscles and they're really, really weak. Or maybe you've just gotten really, really, really deconditioned where you have overall body weakness or overall lower body weakness from not moving or being really, really sedentary. So in those cases, there are some good reasons to do some of those more traditional knee strengthening exercises, particularly the quad set, where you sit with your leg out straight and you try to tighten your thigh muscle and push the back of your knee down into the bed. Now getting your knee straight is really, really important after you have a surgery and just for walking in general, because when you go to put weight on your leg, if you can't straighten your knee all the way or it doesn't straighten all the way, then you have to use your thigh muscles throughout your entire gait cycle to keep your knee from collapsing. Normally when you walk, you should be able to straighten your knee, get it locked out, and then it's pretty much just bone on bone passive contact along with the ligamentous strength in your knee that helps keep it straight. And so you don't actually use your thigh muscles that much for walking but you do wanna be able to get your knee straight by doing a quad set or tightening your thigh muscles if you've had a surgery, for example. And what you should see when you do that, you should actually see a change in the contour of the thigh muscles like that. You shouldn't just be kind of pushing the back of your knee down. You should actually really be squeezing your thigh muscle. Now, the other post-surgical exercise that's really helpful is doing a straight leg raise where you straighten your knee out all the way. You get that good quad set in your leg and then you keep the knee straight. Almost think about lifting your heel first and then lifting your knee and you keep that knee straight the whole way. And then you come back down. You don't want what's called a quad lag where your knee comes up first because then you're not activating your quads in that full knee extension position. So you lift the heel first then lift the knee, hold that. And when you can do about 10 of those, holding those for 10 seconds, you're probably ready to move on from the non-weight bearing knee exercises and move into weight bearing quad exercises or weight bearing knee exercises, which are actually more functional for you. So let's move into the case of walking. Let's say you feel like your knee's unsteady or unstable when you're walking, or you have knee pain when you're walking. There are largely two different things that cause that. And the first one is a frontal plane or a rotational plane problem where you get too much side to side motion of the knee or you get too much twisting in the knee joint. And that twisting and side to side, that's actually not controlled by your knee muscles. It's controlled by your hip muscles and the muscles in your ankle and in your foot. And so if you're getting too much of that motion, it makes your knee unsteady or unstable. If you think about the Colosseum that has pillars holding it up, well, your body really is kind of like that. You have two pillars holding you up or one pillar when you're walking on one leg. And if that pillar is kind of caving inwards, then you're gonna feel weak or unsteady or unstable, even though your thigh muscles may not actually be weak. And so to work on that problem, you wanna focus on being able to keep a nice straight pillar and you'll have to kind of dome your arch like this. You've got an arch right here in your foot and you want a knee over toe alignment and then just practicing balancing and holding that alignment. If you're worried about your knee being weak or unsteady or feeling unstable, standing on one leg is also great for improving your balance, preventing fall risks, and in middle-aged to older adult, it's actually been a predictive factor of preventing mortality or death. 
So being able to stand on one leg for 10 seconds without either hiking your hip up or more commonly allowing your pelvis to dip down, but just being able to hold your belt line level is a really good knee strengthening exercise, even though it doesn't really use your knee muscles or your thigh muscles all that much. It's more strengthening for your ankle and strengthening for your hip. And most knee problems actually come from the hip and the ankle not working properly and your knee just being in the middle getting beaten up. So that's the first knee strengthening exercise for walking. Now the other issue with walking is if you can't get your knee straight, like I mentioned, if you're taking a large step, your foot's out in front of you and you can't get your knee all the way straight, well, if you hit like this, then your knee can potentially buckle. And so you want to be able to get your knee all the way straight when you're walking. So doing that quad set is one good way of doing that. You can also make some changes to the way that you walk. That If you take a really large step like that and you're pulling forward from your heel, your quads have to be a lot more active in that initial heel contact versus if you're pushing off your rear leg and your foot hits more underneath of you, now your body weight is already over the leg, the knee's a little bit straighter already, and you don't have to carry as much of the weight as if you hit way out here. So hitting with your foot underneath of your body rather than hitting with your foot way out in front of your body is another way to improve your knee strength or knee stability when you're walking. So that's walking. Let's move on to squatting or getting up and down from a chair. When you're squatting, there are also sort of a frontal plane problem and a sagittal plane or front and back plane problem. So the frontal plane problem or the rotational plane problem, again, kind of comes with your knees going in like that. When you go to stand up from a chair, if your knees sort of buckle together like this, you may feel weak and unsteady. You also don't have that good stability of the pillars like I described before. And so you wanna make sure that you have your hips, knees, and feet equal width apart. You don't wanna be like that. And largely you don't wanna to be too much like that. Hip geometry affects that a little bit, but largely you want that hip, knee, ankle alignment. And then to get up, if you're standing up like this, you've got your knees right here, your body weight back here, and it takes a whole lot of thigh strength to be able to stand up. So if you bring your feet back a little bit closer to you and lean your trunk forward, then you can get up a whole lot easier just by raising your bottom up and then standing up. Now you still have to use your thigh muscles some to do that, and especially if you're deconditioned, this can be a really good strengthening exercise. It's just practicing standing up and coming up and sit down, lean forward, stand up, come down like that. If you wanna look from the side, it looks more like hips back, sit down, lean forward, come up, hips back, sit down, lean forward, come up. Feet should be a little bit closer than they actually were. Lean forward, stand up, that was much easier. Hips back, lean forward, stand up. So that's a sit to stand motion. Now what about standing up from the ground or getting up from the floor, for example, playing with your grandkids or gardening? When you're getting up from the floor, you wanna first get into a lunge position, kind of do that same thing of lean forward, hip knee toe alignment, and then push up like that. Now that may be really hard for you, especially if you do have some knee pain. So just practicing that and doing a little mini lunge is a good way to strengthen your knee to help you be able to get up and down from the floor with less knee instability, with less difficulty, and with less knee pain. And then as you get stronger, you can go deeper and deeper down into that motion until you can get all the way up and down from the floor. Now, I didn't previously mention, but you should keep your weight on your heel when you're doing that. So you don't want your weight way out on your toe. That puts a lot more stress on your kneecap and on your patellar tendon if you're going like that versus 
if you keep the weight relatively more on your heel, that uses more of your hip muscles or your glute muscles. So that's getting up and down from the floor. Now, finally, what about going up and down stairs? When you're going up and down stairs, you're on one leg. And so you want to first be able to just do that standing balance like I showed earlier, standing on one leg and keeping your pelvis level. Once you get to that point, you can progress to doing a little mini squat where you have one leg in front of you. And this would really more simulate going down the stair where you're reaching out with this leg and you're squatting versus you have the leg in back of you. That simulates more going up the stair where you're pushing up with your front foot. Now, similarly to the other exercises, you wanna make sure that your hip, knee, and toe stay in a good alignment. You also wanna put the weight more through your heel. So when you are going up the stair, you wanna to try to get as much of your foot on the stair, the whole foot if possible, but as much of your foot on the stair as possible so that you can push more through the heel rather than the toes. That will help get your glutes activated and not use excessive force out of your quadriceps, which again can put excessive compression on your kneecap or stress on your patellar tendon. Now, if you do need some more tips for going up and down stairs without knee pain, if you're in the St. Louis area, we'd certainly be happy to help you out at More for Life. But if you're watching this from somewhere else, I've actually got two other videos, one on going up the stairs and one on going down the stairs, which will appear here in just a few moments. And if you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.